Hello YouTube, Vibe Community, my name's Lex. I'm the creator of this channel here, which is going to be Alexander Graham Pipes. Uh, for those of you that have already read my channel description, I have a lot of hobbies. Um, cigar enthusiast, pipe enthusiast, gun enthusiast, hunter, bushcrafter, general, woodsman, uh, craftsman, car enthusiast. And the other night as I was sitting here, last night actually, um, I was loading up my St. Patrick's Day 2008 Peterson pipe here. I had a few ideas on a few different ways to make a pipe. Uh, some new ideas that I haven't seen on the market. Uh, maybe because when people have tried it when they failed. But I don't know. I'm going to give them a shot. And so I decided that I was going to create this channel. And I was like, well, if I do start creating pipes, what am I going to call them? You know, what name am I going to give them? So I decided to put my full first name and my middle name together, which is Alexander Graham. Um, AGP, Alexander Graham Pipes. So if this does end up taking off, that's what uh, what this is going to be. It ends up becoming a, a new hobby of mine. I'm obviously not going to be greedy and keep them all for myself. So this is going to be my introduction video here. Uh, and I didn't want it just to be a boring, regular introduction video. Hi, I'm Lex. Goodbye. So... Uh, one of the pipe forums that I'm a part of, they have a list of questions that they have that they ask new members to the forum. So I kind of wanted to pull a few questions off that uh, forum and answer them here for the beginning of this YouTube channel. Uh, one of the first ones is, what got you into pipe smoking? Ever since I was a little kid, I had an appeal to pipe smoking. I remember being about seven or eight years old and going into the local tobacconist here, which is about the only one here in Utah's tinderbox. Uh, with, with my dad, and he would buy us an occasional cigar for one of his friends at work. It was like a Christmas present, birthday present, thank you for helping me out with this, or whatever. Uh, he was never a cigar or pipe smoker himself, but I remember occasionally going in there, and he'd walk back into the humidor to pick out a cigar, and me being underage was not allowed back in the humidor. But I remember standing at the front counter and just looking at all the pipes that they had in the counter, and just looking at their shapes and thinking just how cool they are as a little kid. And I remember being about seven or eight and actually asking my dad, Dad, can I have one of those things? They're really cool. Uh, and, you know, the cashier laughed. He laughed. And, and they laughed at me as a kid. And my dad's like, you don't need to take up smoking. It's a bad habit and all this stuff. So uh, when I turned 19, which is the legal smoking age here in Utah, guess what I did? I went and bought my first pipe, which is actually this one right here in the bag, which is just a basket pipe. I think I picked it up for... Uh, I think they gave it to me on like a deal for like 10 or 15 bucks. Which is this guy right here, which is just kind of a bent billiard. Uh, it's a great pipe. Still smokes good. Smoke it almost uh, at least once a week usually. I'll smoke that pipe. So that's what got me into pipe smoking. So I always just kind of had an appeal to it. Uh, one of the second ones is what's your favorite pipe? What's your favorite pipe maker? Uh, I'm a big fan of Peterson. Uh, Peterson was actually. One of the reasons as to when I turned 19 and decided I was going to buy a pipe and take a pipe smoking is because my family's of Irish descent and that's something my family's really been pretty proud of. And so when I found out that there was Peterson of Dublin, who was one of the top pipe makers out there, and how big of a, of a tradition in Irish culture pipe smoking is, I knew that was something I wanted to be a part of. So that's another reason that got me into pipe smoking. So I picked up a few Petersons. And my favorite pipe that I own, which is sitting right here somewhere amongst my vast collection, is a bent tapered Dublin. I like bent pipes. I'm not much of a straight pipe person. Uh, I do own a couple of them, and they're okay, but they're definitely not my favorite. I like being able to see the tobacco in my pipe when I'm lighting it. So this is my favorite pipe that I own right here. Bent tapered Dublin, rusticated system pipe. So you know, when I'm lighting it, when i got my match or my lighter, and I'm pulling it across the top of the bowl, I like to look at it and I like to see that tobacco as a light. So I like to see it kind of puff up and expand. I like to look at the the ash that builds up on top of it. I just like being able to see inside my pipe, and that's just not something you get as much with uh, straight shapes, uh, the billiards, especially like the pokers and stuff like that. They're just not particularly my pipe. This is my pipe right here. I am starting to get into the indie pipes uh, in the hopes of becoming an indie pipe maker myself here pretty soon. I haven't started ordering very many of them yet. 
Um, but I'm planning on getting a couple of those out of like Joe Case, Tennessee, uh, Hacker, and a bunch of other ones that I looked at. Um, guy here in Utah who actually started the Tobacco Pipe Collectors. Um, I've uh, met his wife. She actually works at the Tinderbox, and she was showing me pictures pictures of some of the indie pipes that they have and some of the hackers that they have. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. And that's another reason why I wanted to get him to start making them my own, being the craftsman that I am. Uh, one of the next questions that's usually on the list is what type of bad tobacco do you like? Do you like aromatic? Do you like English? Do you like non-aromatic? What's your favorite tobacco? I really can't answer what my favorite tobacco is because being here in Utah, uh, they actually have a law against ordering tobacco online. You cannot purchase tobacco products online through catalog order, through the mail, or anything like that. Uh, if they, I know a lot of people that get away with it. I've gotten away with it in the past. But if they catch you, it's a $5,000 fine. Uh, and I'm not willing to spend $5,000 of my hard-earned money because I want to smoke some pipe tobacco. So uh, I can receive care packages. People can send me tobacco, uh, but I just can't physically order it. So if I wanted to order it, I'd have to have a buddy in a different state, purchase it, send it to them, and have them slap a new label on it and send it to me and pay for shipping twice. And it's just kind of a hassle. I don't really know anybody out there that's reliable enough to do that for me right now. So uh, uh, there's a couple out there that I'd be willing to do that on. Uh, Mississippi River, definitely being one of them from PipesAndCigars.com. That's one that I really, really want to try. Uh, there's probably a whole list of tobaccos out there that I haven't tried and will probably won't get much of a chance to unless I find someone that I can uh, send them to and send them to me and go through that process. So for the purpose of these videos, because I'm also going to be doing a lot of you know just general pipe smoking, talking about pipes when I get new pipes, reviewing pipes, reviewing different tobaccos. Everything you see me have will be from Tinderbox. Because as I mentioned earlier, that's about the only pipe maker or uh, tobacconist here that's really worth a pissed is Tinderbox. So almost all the tobaccos you see me with will be in these little bags uh, in one ounce packages. So uh, with that, I'm not much of an aromatic smoker. Two aromatics that I do really like is this Maker's Mark and this Cherry Cordial. Uh, I find with a lot of aromatics, once you get about halfway through the bowl, they just really start tasting like crap. These two don't. They stay nice, consistent throughout the entire bowl. Uh, this cherry curl cordial tends to burn kind of hot for me for some reason. I think it's because it's still just a little moist, so I'm leaving it in this bag so it can dry out. Same thing with the Maker's Mark. It tends to be a little moist, so I'm going to dry in these bags a little bit. Uh, other than that, one of the new tobaccos that I have picked up recently that's new to me that I really do enjoy is Navy Flake, right here. Um, I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it. However, I have not quite figured this stuff out yet. The guy at Tinderbox told me you just kind of fold it up and do a bunch of little Z's like an accordion and then you just start twisting the ends off and tearing off little pieces. Uh, so that way it breaks up in a little bit, so then you just load that into your pipe like you would normal and smoke it. Uh, I don't know if I just need to tear it finer or if I need to chop it up with a knife or something, but it still ends up being fairly thick for me. I'm having trouble keeping it burning, uh, which is unfortunate because I hate having to relight 10, 12, 15 times. I don't mind having to relight, relight you know, four or five, but when you're having to relight almost every puff, it just gets annoying. Uh, and I have not found a video of anybody out there giving a real good a tutorial on how to process that stuff down and load it into your bowl. So if someone out there can point me in the right direction for that, I would very, very much appreciate it. Because uh, I do love the smell and the taste of that stuff from what I get out of it, but I would like more. I want to get it to burn and process correctly. Uh, well, those are the three questions that I mainly wanted to answer for you guys, tell you who I am, why I started this channel, and uh, what, what my intentions are with it. Um, you guys will probably be watching me make several pipes and probably fell quite a few times before I start getting them right. Uh, so I'm going to start making my prototypes out of wood that I have laying in the shop uh, just, to, just to get the feel for, for making it before I start ordering some, some briar and um, cherry wood, maybe some walnut. I'm probably going to do a bunch of corn cobs too because honestly I like corn and they're easy to do from what I know but I've never made one. So uh, we're going to be going through a lot of that. So I hope to catch you guys soon. Uh, stay tuned. Everybody click the little subscribe button if you are so inclined. And hopefully this channel will get interesting.
Have a good one. See you guys soon.